Hi, I'm Peter from Coffee Parts, and today, oh, hold on, 14325. yep, to yep, Archinko and Toto cleared for landing. Yep. And there you have it, the rocket Archinko and Toto. One of my favorite things about the Rocket brand is they design timeless machines. It's part of their philosophy. And one of the things they do is try to hide all the digital elements, yet they do recognize that it does help to have a lot of the PID controllers, the shot timers, etc. So on some of their models like the Giotto Mozza Fiat, they hide it behind the drip tray. In the case of the R50 Toto, and which is the evolution of the R58, they've got it here in this module, which is actually removable. So you can turn off the machine, pull it out, unplug it, and that's gone. So once you've set the machine, you don't need it, but you can keep it here to see your shot timer. And they've actually hidden a shot timer just behind there. So from that perspective, the machine was always gonna look the same as it ages, hopefully being timeless. Now, when it comes to this machine, it's a rotary pump twin boiler machine. You've got a 1.8 litre steam boiler and a 0.6 litre brew boiler and the PID is controlling both boilers. With this they've actually built in the offset into the PID so the temperature you see here is the temperature the machine is registering at and of course you can run it in Fahrenheit or Celsius. The boilers are copper to become more temperature stable and some of the design changes from the R58 to the R50 Toto have been kind of minor, but they make a statement. The folding and the cup rail has become a lot more solid. You've got the cup rail that's now moved to the edge and a lot more of a squared look. And obviously the feet. The feet have gone from kind of a stock standard round feet to a design element. And the controller. The controller went from a pretty ugly screen to a proper LCD screen. Now, one thing I don't like about it is for such a nice machine, the plastic around the screen does feel almost 3D printed. I don't know if it is, but it does feel that way. But in saying that, the operation of the screen and just the sensitivity and the accuracy of where you're touching it is spot on. It reminds me of an iPhone. Now, you can change the angle of the screen just by removing it, adjusting the screw here, moving that and putting it back in. If you are keeping the screen, obviously just turn off the machine pull the screen out, unplug it, and not use it. Now, just putting the screen back and turning it back on, you'll see it start up very quickly. Now, talking screens, you've got the menu, which is quite simple. You've got your brew boiler temperature, and you've got the ability to turn off or turn on your steam boiler and your steam boiler temperature down there. Obviously, Celsius or Fahrenheit, depending on what you prefer. You got your echo mode, which means that the machine will shut down automatically after 90 minutes if unused. You got your calendar, which is just a scheduling tool to turn on and off the machine up to two times a day. So in the morning and to say at lunch, if you wanted it that way per day. And then just the usual date and time, language, and your water inlet, whether you're running it from the tank or you're moving it to a plumbed in setup. So obviously this machine can be run from a tank in your drip tray or plumbed in. Talking about drip trays, one thing they've done is put in simple little magnets at the back of the drip tray. And what that means is when you pull it out and put them back in, it just locks into place firmly. Exactly the same as what Lama Zork have done with the Mini and GS3. Something very simple, but it's really nice that it's always firm in place and lined up correctly. When it comes to steam arms, and hot water taps, they are cool touch like most machines these days. And the actual seam taps are full commercial taps. So these are the same taps you find in some of the Fa'ema coffee machines. And the group head, of course, is a famous and legendary E61 group head, which not only has pre-infusion, but due to its four kilos of brass, but it also allows for pre-infusion being mechanical. With the shot timer, it's hidden just here. So as you activate the lever, that shot timer will start counting down. While the machine's on idle, it will also show if the machine's heating or not. 
Bear in mind, the shot timer is also shown here where the R is on the screen. So you've got the shot timer in both. And the reason for that is if you're not running the screen, you still have a shot timer on the lever actuation. And like most machines, you've got your dual gauges, one for your pump pressure and one for your steam pressure in the rear boiler. Now that we looked at the specs, let's dive into it, make some coffees and see how it performs. Now we've preloaded 21 grams into the Rocket Naked Porter Filter. So just one thing to note, in Australia, the machine comes with a double porter filter and a naked. For the rest of the world, it comes with a double and single porter filter. The reason they did that in Australia, they found that a lot of people buying naked at an aftermarket and not using their singles. So they thought they'll just make everyone happy and just go naked. So locking this in and then activating the shot, we'll see that both the shot timer here and on the machine gets activated straight away. Just watching that come out. So if you are an espresso lover, you can turn off the steam boiler and you can run this machine just with a brew boiler. nice sweet well-rounded coffee I really do enjoy this machine and the temperature really is stable so the 93 degrees you're seeing here because they're built in the offset not only is it 93 the variance is probably 0.3 of a degree so you are very temperature stable now let's do a milk based coffee to see how the steam functions once again we preloaded 21 grams into the rocket naked porter filter and we're just going to run a shot and then do a flat wipe. So just locking that in, activating the group head. And now when it comes to milk, the machine does come with two steam tips straight out of the box. They're both two hole tips. One tip runs 1.5 millimeter holes and the other tip 1.2. The reason for this is with a 1.5, you've got a certain amount of work time. So it steams quite and heats the milk quite quickly. You've only got a certain amount of time. With a 1.2, the machine can pretty much just keep pumping out steam for as long as you need. So it really depends on what you prefer. Just doing a quick purge. And now, running the steam. Too hot. Stretching it a bit. And then, once we've got some volume in there, we'll just heat up the milk a little bit more. off give the tip a quick wipe all right and quick purge there we go and now we can go in and pour and there we have a nice little flat wipe so this machine really does work if you are entertaining at home. Now, curious to know, do you own one? Do you have the Rocket, the Rocket R58, this one or another one? Or are you looking at one? Leave us a comment below, or even if you just have a question. Hit that like button and subscribe. And now let's send off the Rocket back into space. Archie Glen Toto, cleared for takeoff.